take it away. Okay. Thank you, Abby. And thank you for having us and thank you for joining us today. Um, so I, I'm Jake Patton. I'm the coordinator for the Milwaukee County Veterans Treatment Court. Um, so I'm going to be discussing really uh, just kind of like the bare bones of a Veterans Treatment Court, uh, the history of it, uh, why we have them, um, and, and actually what it is and the benefits of it. And then Abby will get to more of the uh, treatment and engagement piece, um, holistic side of things. Um, so the mission of the Milwaukee County Veterans Treatment Court is to successfully habilitate veterans in recognition of their service to our country and the challenges they and their families may encounter. So what we really want to do is uh, delve into the problem on why the, the, that particular veteran became justice involved um, and changed their behavior. Uh, so our really our unofficial motto, I guess, is leave no vet behind. So we're willing to work with any and all veterans. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so how it started. Uh, so the first Veterans Treatment Court was established in 2008 in Buffalo, New York, uh, with Judge Robert Russell. And there's Judge Russell at the bottom there. Um, so Judge Russell created the nation's first Veterans Treatment Court in response to the growing number of veterans appearing on his docket suffering from substance abuse and mental health issues. Uh, so just a quick backstory on Judge Russell. Uh, so early 2000s, Judge Russell was the mental health uh, treatment court judge in Buffalo, New York. Um, and he had a Vietnam era veteran uh, on his docket appear before him. Um, and this veteran came in, um, he was really just beaten up, uh, looking down, um, not really answering any of Judge Russell's questions. Uh, and he wasn't engaging any of the treatment that was being offered to him. Um, and so at the time, Judge Russell had two other Vietnam era veterans working with the courts. Um, and so Judge Russell asked if those two individuals would take this veteran out in the hall, just speak with them, uh, seeing what, what was going on, like if, if there's anything that can change. Um, so they did. Uh, about 20 minutes later, this veteran came back, um, standing upright, uh, straight up, looking directly in Judge Russell, um, looking him in the eye, answering all of his questions soundly and clearly. Um, and he started to re-engage in treatment again. So Judge Russell knew that there was some, some connection there, um, resorting back to that military culture. Um, veterans treatment courts are currently the, the fastest growing treatment court in, in the country. Uh, currently, there are over 400 veteran treatment courts operating in the United States. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and this quote, I feel, really captures uh, what we see in, in, in the Milwaukee County Veterans Treatment Court. Um, uh, today's veterans often come home to find that although they're willing to die for their country, they're not sure how to live for it. Um, and Sebastian Unger um, is an author and, and a journalist. Uh, he was embedded with a um, airborne infantry unit um, in Afghanistan for 15 months uh, from 2006 to 2007. Um, and he still keeps in contact with a lot of veterans that he, he, he was over there with. Uh, next slide, please. And the uh, Chicagoland Veterans Study. Uh, so this study was conducted by the University of Southern California uh, School of Social Work in partnership with Loyola University in Chicago. Uh, what this study intended to do was uh, find out what the needs of service members are as they transition out of the military. Um, this could include securing employment, housing, um, addressing physical or mental health issues, um, or even just uh, adjusting uh, adjustment issues um, after time in the military. Um, findings from this study uh, actually mirrored those observed from similar studies in Southern California and other sites across the country. Um, and so what, what that meant was uh, there was just a, a national transition effort that was needed. Um, there's was, there was a broader systematic issue on veterans transitioning out of the military. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> um, as you can see some numbers here, uh, one in five veterans have, have symptoms of a mental health disorder. Uh, one in six who served in Iraq or Afghanistan suffer from substance abuse. Um, so the, in the Vietnam era conflict, uh, there is a lot of evidence that a significant number of veterans who returned who returned home were experiencing rather severe problems adjusting to civilian life. Uh, many veterans remained untreated for a long period of time. Uh, the VA and local courts uh, are starting to recognize that many of the veterans today are also returning home with mental health issues. Uh, that left untreated can result in much, much larger problems, uh, specifically criminal involvement. Um, as you can see, veterans are twice as likely to become homeless as non-vets, um, and the single best predicator of future homelessness is criminal involvement. Next slide, please. 
And so what are we looking to do uh, for the Milwaukee County Veterans Treatment Court? Uh, so our program goals uh, is to reignite the core values of military service and a veteran participants daily routine. Um, and so I think that's really like the, the biggest piece on what, what we're aiming to do. Um, we want to reinstill that that sense of that sense of purpose again. Um, so, be where you're supposed to be. Be on time. Come prepared. Um, building back that integrity. Uh, we also reduce criminal recidivism and other core contacts. Um, we do that by facilitating sobriety, abstinence, improved behavioral health. We work to alleviate issues surrounding service-related behavioral health issues, uh, and we ensure available VA, VA benefits are are being offered and services are accessed. Uh, we integrate community-based treatment options, uh, and we improve family relationships and other support connections, and as well as economic stability. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so a lot of times people often uh, think of veterans treatment courses as just like a, a get-out-of-jail-free card. Um, all they have to do is be a veteran, and their either case is going to disappear. Uh, that, that's not the case at all. Um, this program is very uh, intensive. It's very time-consuming. Um, there's frequent court appearances. Uh, we monitor for absolute sobriety through frequent urinalysis testing. Um, and the, one of the main pieces is that veterans, they plead guilty and they accept responsibility for their actions. And then at that time, we're overseen by, by a team led by the judge. And as you can see here, there's a lot of uh, system partners that are involved in a veteran's treatment court looking to turn that veteran's life around. Next slide, please. Um, so benefits of participation, uh, successful completion of the program can lead to dismissal of the case, uh, reduction of charges or some other favorable outcome. Um, veterans again, go on to reunite with families. They find jobs, they return to being contributing members of society. Um, here in Milwaukee, we've served over 350 veterans, um, and we're operating at uh, close to an 80% success rate. Um, veterans courts again, are our budget solution, uh, because they lower criminal justice system costs by reducing jail and prison time. Um, and cutting crime, cutting crime. Uh, we transform individuals into productive law abiding citizens. Next slide, please. And I this think is that where is Abby will take over. Yeah, my cue. Thank you, Jake. Um, so, uh, again, my name is Abby Zebel, and I am a licensed clinical social worker, and I've been working with the Milwaukee County Veteran Treatment Court since it uh, officially began. I think. I think was in December of 2012, if I'm not mistaken. So um, as Jake mentioned earlier, engagement in treatment court is, is pretty rigorous and has a lot of expectations. And so in order to best guide that and make sure that we are not asking our clients to do things that are not indicated for their needs, or um, we don't want to ask them to do things that uh, might hurt them, all of that, we're going to be completing full clinical treatment assessments we are using um, evidence-based treatment tools to come up with that treatment plan with the veteran. And we are helping to collaborate and support them in creating that treatment plan. And so what I often like to tell clients is that, you know, with treatment court, there are definitely some have to's, right? Everybody does have to do um, certain requirements to get through the program. Jake mentioned earlier, absolute sobriety is generally one of them. Um, but that treatment plan is also absolutely meant to align with their veteran center goals and to get them connected and engaging and doing the things that they deem to be the most important priorities for their life. So we are absolutely coming up with treatment plans to address um, improved family relationships and vocational engagement or um, helping them with um, financial literacy, I mean, you name it, if, if it is a goal of theirs to be working on, we're gonna help connect them with a resource to support them in that area. Um, and so we are also, to that end, moving a lot more toward holistic approaches um, to offer an, an even broader continuum of services for veterans. So the VA in general has been um, moving toward much more holistic care and we have recently, in the last couple of years, I want to say, started to develop um, what we call the whole health program. And, um, you know, the VA as a whole is recognizing that health outcomes in our country are not great. And I'm sure I'm kind of preaching to the choir here and that many of you are probably familiar with that as a general rule. 
Um, the U.S. is ranked 32nd in life expectancy, despite the massive amount of resources that we dump into our healthcare system and insurance funded agencies. So, um, you know, we're moving toward uh, creating a health system that is more person centered. We want to help that veteran um, feel empowered, um, equipping them with necessary tools to live their best life and work toward holistic health and wellness. Um, it is definitely patient driven and more about what matters to them as compared or opposed to what is the matter with you kind of model. So this lovely, uh, I guess we can call it a Venn diagram, um, is kind of just outlining um, the VA's whole health program as a whole. And um, you can kind of see on the outside, the broadest circle is that community center um, moving inward. We're working on the conventional and complementary treatment approaches along with preventative care services. And as, again, we continue moving inward for the circle, um, we are, well, the, the most inner part of the circle, obviously, is the person-centered um, veteran. And we are focusing on more mindfulness connections and awareness connections. And then all of those um, extra circles on the outside are kind of the areas that we're touching on to make sure that veterans are developing care plans and support resources in those areas, if indicated. You know, sometimes they'll say, yeah, you know, while, I, hey, I hear you, there's great benefits to yoga. Um, that's just not, that's not where I want to move or, or go toward. And that's fine. Again, respecting patient preference and helping them connect the ways that they find meaningful, but also helping to broaden their perspective that there um, are a lot more approaches to care and treatment than the traditional um, take medications or um, even mental health, behavioral health therapy services are wonderful and excellent, but just they're not always uh, a one size fits all approach. So um, studies have been coming out. We are we are reviewing um, how things are going with that whole health program and there have been some excellent data showing that veterans who do use whole health services are much better able to manage their stress. Um, they are appreciating that the care is much more patient-centered and less of being told what to do. This is what you need. Um, they're liking that they have a lot more control and um, options. Um, there's also been some studies that show um, major reductions in chronic pain, specifically a threefold reduction in the need for using prescribed opioid use um, narcotics for pain management. And um, those who are using the whole health program are also showing um, improvements in other areas of their life with weight loss, improved mental health, um, improved vital signs, etc. So some of the VA's whole health program um, complementary and integrative approaches are listed here. Um, and I promise not to read to you this entire list. I, I wholly trust that you can kind of review that here while I'm talking in the background. Um, but I can say that, you know, veterans have really been appreciating these additional treatment services and resources um, and really connecting with them in very meaningful ways. Um, specifically, the recreation therapy has been a great hit. That's something that's always been uh, involved at the VA, but um, has really kind of taken off with additional funding with movement toward equine therapy and boat building. There's just been some really incredible things going on there. I'm aware too of another VA clinician that's right now getting trained up on hypnosis treatment, which I think will be really exciting when we get that started. Um, so when I say the this particular list of complementary and integrative approaches, these particular care services are um, programs that are listed within the VA's community care network as approved care programs. And noticeably, what is missing from this list is float um, services, which I think is just a massive disservice. And I am hopeful and having some conversations with treatment um, providers at the VA, our community care program to say, hey, is this being discussed? Is this something that's being talked about? Could float be added into our integrative approach? And I will say uh, locally here in Milwaukee, um, Andy from Float Milwaukee has been excellent in advocating for his programming here at the VA as well. He has been reaching out to VA staff, clinicians, um, has been so gracious in offering um, persons to try float services. 
and specifically clinicians to kind of talk to their patients about it and say, hey, have you ever thought about this? Have you ever given it a try? Hey, I've tried it too. Here's what I found. Um, and so I am just really excited and incredibly hopeful that float is something that can be added into this um, complementary treatment approach at the VA. So with that in, in mind, again, another shout out to Float Milwaukee. Um, Andy has been so incredibly kind in um, collaborating with our treatment court. And as Jake outlined earlier, there are some great benefits to treatment courts overall in helping persons get back to um, their core values and living their best life. And Andy recognized that and said, hey, I want to help. I want to be a part of this. I want to support, excuse me, I want to support your program. And so he has been um, allowing complimentary floats to individuals who are actively involved in the veteran court or successfully completed the program. And so I did reach out to a couple of my um, clients and asked, just asked them, hey, you know, I was just curious if you would be willing to write down uh, a testimonial as to how you felt that service went. Um, and so two of them um, I just thought were, were excellent feedback. So this first um, testimonial comes from a female veteran. Um, it was diagnosed with PTSD, military-related trauma. And her testimonial was that completing veteran court and soon after experiencing Float Milwaukee was like releasing all of my shame guilt, and embarrassment into the water, and I floated away from it all. I felt more calm than I had in years. Thank you for the experience. It was indescribably freeing and relaxing. And the second testimonial came from another veteran court participant. He too successfully completed the program, um, also has been diagnosed with PTSD, um, experienced trauma in his lifetime. And he said that float was an experience that made me realize that I need to decompress and disconnect from things out of my realm of control. I felt great afterwards. Both of them also shared that they felt it had a very profound impact for them in mindfully connecting, decreasing their anxiety, promoting sleep, that they could use it as almost a guided imagery event for them where they felt, you know, hey, I'm getting really keyed up or stressed. I'm going to bring myself back to this floating sensation and remind myself how I felt during and can almost replicate it in their mind um, and, and re-experience it over and over. So uh, we are incredibly grateful to Float Milwaukee for the um, gift of collaboration and connection and for services to really, again, just share this profound experience with persons experiencing trauma. So. Um, we invite you to consider developing a supportive or collaborative relationship with your local treatment courts. Um, we are uh, very akin to veteran treatment courts ourselves. We may be a bit biased in our opinions here, Jake and I, um, but that's not to say that every treatment court is not worthy and valuable of your potential connection. So there are drug treatment courts all over the nation. There are also mental health treatment courts and um, veteran treatment courts. And, you know, I, I will say that I believe trauma in general is an underlying problem in all of those treatment courts. So no door that you knock on, I think, would be a, a bad idea. Um, but in relation to veteran treatment courts, um, just some resources here that you could consider for connecting and engaging of like, well, hey, how do I find that or where to start? Um, obviously, there's the, the basic website searches if you wanted to search for your local city and treatment courts. But there's also the County Veteran Service Officer website here that's been provided. Um, there is in every single county of every single state uh, an assigned County Veteran Service Officer, and they should be um, well aware of resources that exist locally within their county and hopefully their treatment courts as well. We've also included here the National Center for State Courts, a nonprofit court improvement organization to consider utilizing or connecting with. Um, and in addition, Justice for Vets. They are a national training and technical assistance provider for the Bureau of Justice Assistance. A lot of really big words that basically means they're one of our national providers that kind of watches and, and helps us grow, make sure we're following evidence-based practice, that we're doing things that are going to be supportive to justice-involved persons and making sure that we're helping and not hurting them through these ju judicial processes. So um, I am hopeful that access to this PowerPoint can be provided to you all. 
um, via the conference. But if not, um, certainly Jake and I wholly invite you to reach out to either one of us um, directly to ask for a copy of it or resources or ideas on that front. Um, to that end, I'm gonna skip over this, this last slide here real quick and come back to it. This, um, I'm gonna give a, a little time here for Jake and my email and direct contact numbers for you just to maybe jot down in case you don't have PowerPoint access. And we do invite you to reach out to us directly at any time to check in, touch base, um, collaborate, get some ideas, however that may work. Thank you so much for having us. I, I think Float is just incredible and such a great uh, treatment option. And um, I'm looking forward to learning more from you all as well. Mm -hmm.